welcome to all students today we are going to discuss about a very important topic and that is known as the sickle cell anemia the sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder and it is not having any permanent cure and it is a autosomal linked recessive trait see hemophilia color blindness are sex linked uh, traits okay why they are sex linked traits because they were associated the gene for the hemophilia and the color blindness were actually present on the sex chromosomes but it is a autosomal linked recessive traits it is clear that the gene of the sickle cell anemia or the gene responsible for the sickle cell anemia will be concerned with some autosomal chromosome so very first you must know that this this disease is associated with the which gene and that gene is present on which chromosome now see here in all those normal persons right like we people who are not suffering from the uh, sickle cell anemia in we people there is a gene known as the hba gene which is responsible for the normal hemoglobin chain or which is responsible for the uh, beta chain of normal beta chain of hemoglobin okay and this hba gene is present on the chromosome number 11 which is a autosome now what happens due to the molecular mutation this hba gene is actually converted to hbs hba gene is converted to hbs and this hbs gene is responsible for the sickle cell hemoglobin or we can say it as it is responsible for the sickle cell anemia okay so that's why i have written that disease is controlled by this disease is controlled by a pair of gene hba and hbs hba gene is present in the normal persons and those persons who are suffering from the sickle cell anemia they have the hbs gene and this hbs gene is produced by hba only when mutation occurs in this gene okay fine now how this disease is transmitted first of all we will be discussing this thing see this that there are three possible genotypes here hba hba it is the normal one hba hbs it is the sickle cell trait it is very important point right and here this is called as a heterozygous condition right it is heterozygous for hba hbs so this is the sickle cell trait and hbs hbs this is called as a disease condition which causes the sickle cell anemia so all together we can see that hba hba is normal one hba hbs is sickle cell trait and hbs hbs is disease condition okay and one more thing that how the disease is transmitted so the disease is transmitted from the parents to the offspring remember when both the partners are carrier for the gene when both the partners are carrier for the gene right means i want to say that when both the partners are heterozygous right then this disease is transmitted to the offspring say for these are the parents these are the two partners which are actually sickle cell trait which are sickle cell traits okay sickle cell trait means the carrier of the disease so this is hba hbs and hba hbs when these two partners will be crossed then a sickle cell anemia patient will be produced so see here hba 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 hbs hba hbs again and hbs hbs now this is the normal phenotype this is the sickle cell trait phenotype and this is the sickle cell anemia okay so like this it is transmitted from parents to offspring now how this defect is caused this also you must know so defect is caused by the substitution of the glutamic acid by a, another amino acid valine present at the sex position of beta globin chain of hemoglobin molecule means the major reason for the sickle cell anemia is that that all the normal persons who are having the beta chain of hemoglobin on their sixth position a amino acid is present known as the glutamic acid but due to molecular mutation what happens that the glutamic acid present on the sixth position of beta chain of hemoglobin is replaced by a, another amino acid known as the valine amino acid means it is very much clear when glutamic acid present at sixth position is replaced by the valine amino acid in the beta chain of hemoglobin then this defect is caused known as the sickle cell anemia now uh, why this happened the question arises why this happened 
that why if the butyric acid present at the sixth position of hemoglobin is replaced by the valine so the reason is that the substitution of the amino acid in the glucine protein results due to single base substitution this change of the butyric acid to the valine occurs because of the single base substitution single base substitution means it is a very good example of point mutation that's why we say that sickle cell anemia is a very good example of point mutation where what happens single base substitution occur at the sixth codon the single base substitution or the point mutation occur at the sixth codon present on the mrna right of the beta globin chain from gag to gg right what is the difference here there is the gag and this is the gug so this a right undergoes point mutation and because of which a becomes u right so the codons are changed and definitely we know very well we have already studied the genetic code and we know very well that codons are present on mrna and each codon codes a particular amino acid right codons are very much specific that is the property so we know very well that gag codon codes glutamic acid but when the base substitution will occur and gag will be converted to gug then in that case the gug will not code the glutamic acid it will code what it will code the valine amino acid like this the defect is caused like this the defect is caused okay now the same thing i have presented with the help of the diagram also you can see here that this is a normal individual this is the rbc taken from the normal individual this is the rbc taken from the normal individual which is by concave disc like shape and this is the rbc taken from a person who is suffering from the sickle cell anemia and it is having the sickle shaped rbc sickle shaped rbc sickle is the uh, uh, equipment used in uh, the agriculture for cutting the grass and all it is question mark shape right in the same manner here also the rbc become uh, sickle in shape that's why the name is given the sickle shape uh, sickle shape rbc now this is the normal hemoglobin normal hba gene this is the normal hba gene okay now we know very well what is gene gene is nothing it is a fragment of dna so dnas are having two strands so one strand of the dna is having gag and the another strand is having the ctc so this is what this is the template strand we know very well that in the process of the transcription what is transcription formation of mrna from dna so in the process of the transcription when from the dna mrna is formed out of the two strands of the dna one dna is participating so uh, this is participating this is participating so this is what is the tetrad strand so always a complementary sequence will be formed on the mrna so c then g because we know when we are the complementary of c is g the complementary of t a t is a and the complementary of c is g okay so if the normal hbg is there when this sequence then the mrna will be having this codon gag in the similar manner you can see that sickle cell hbsg sickle cell hbsg is having the dna of like this type which is having the sequence g t g and c a c so on the mrna what will happen this is going to participate in transcription which is which will be acting as template so the complementary will be formed of the mrna c g complementary of a is u because we know very well that rna is not having the t so only the t is replaced by u so a u c and g so what is this this is the mrna so the mrna now in the normal hemoglobin chain is having gag by the mrna right is having the codon gug in a patient suffering from the sickle cell anemia so now what will happen you can see there is a single base substitution you can see there is a single base substitution that is a and here is g so this codon will code a uh, another amino acid and this codon will code a another amino acid so you can see that at the sixth position glutamic acid is present why because gag codes glutamic acid but as the point mutation has been happened so gug now will code valine amino acid and like this the defect will be caused so this is a hba peptide this is a hba peptide taken from the normal person 
and this is the HBS peptide which is actually present in the person suffering from sickle cell anemia. So what will happen? The mutant hemoglobin molecule, this is what? The mutant hemoglobin molecule undergoes what? Polymerization under low oxygen tension which causes the change in the shape of the RBC from the normal biconcave disc like to the elongated sickle like structure. Okay. Now the question arises that if the patient is suffering from the sickle cell anemia and if the RBC become uh, sickle shape uh, in shape instead of the biconcave, so what will happen? So there are certain symptoms here. Always remember that a sickle shell RBC is small in size in comparison to the biconcave RBC and because of which it is able to carry less oxygen and therefore the body will not be supplied with enough oxygen and therefore the body will get fatigue and the body will not get the energy because we know very well the oxygen supply to the body is very very important because it provides energy so when the, when the oxygen will not be supplied the person will feel very much fatigue so we can say that RBCs are not able to carry enough oxygen right why because it has become small in shape so it is not able to carry why when it will become small in shape there will be less hemoglobin now hemoglobin carries oxygen so when there is less hemoglobin it will carry less oxygen so the person will feel fatigue right second one is when the rbc become irregular in shape that is when it becomes sickle shape blood flow is also blocked so there is not enough supply of the blood to the body parts and when there is no enough supply of the blood then there will be less supply of the oxygen also fine and the major thing is it is what is a sickle cell anemia person suffers from a type of anemia right so what happens in this that a sickle a sickle cell or we can say that a sickle shaped rbc right will not live long normally the rbcs are having the life span of 120 days but instead a rbc which is sickle shaped is having the life span of only 10 to 20 days so it will die soon and when the rbc will die so there will be deficiency of the hemoglobin in the body because we know very well that hemoglobin is present in the rbc so the person will become deficient in the hemoglobin because of the lack of the rbc and we know that ultimately when there is lack of hemoglobin in the body person will suffer from anemia not only this there is severe uh, pain in the bones in the body of the persons who are suffering from the sickle cell anemia there is a swelling in the hands and the feet region especially right there is delayed growth and sometimes it has been seen that certain vision problems are also seen in the patient suffering from the sickle cell anemia okay and at the last one thing more that uh, individual of uh, a sickle cell trait, those individuals who are the sickle cell traits are never suffering from the malaria, they are totally immune to the malaria. Why? Because the pathogen of the malaria that is known as the plasmodium always attacks the healthy RBC. They never attack the RBC of a sickle cell person where the RBCs are sickle shaped. Okay? So they all are immune to the malaria. Okay, so we have talked today about the sickle cell anemia, a genetic disorder which was an autosomal disorder related to the chromosome number 11 when the molecular mutation occur and HBA gene converts into HBS, this problem starts. Okay, so hope you have liked this video. Thanks a lot. We will be coming soon with few more videos of like this type. So thank you. If you want to take the screenshot of this video, you can take it.